think we're going live uh, every time. Uh, so you didn't know I could sing, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know I could sing because I can't. <laughs> well, I have to say, I'm really honored that you invited me to be on your show. <laughs> Oh, well, that's a good thing. Yeah, we just try to, you know, share the wealth and share the knowledge because, you know, I know you went through some things that most people are trying to get to and trying to figure out that, you know, how can I get like you and close my first deal, close my second deal and then get hooked by this real estate thing? It's amazing, isn't it? It is. It, it is. It's all about people and patience as well. Yeah, you definitely got to work with some people because uh, if you can solve those people problems, you can get those checks, right? Right, right. I'm just so I'm just so lucky I got into it. But whenever you're ready, I'm ready. Oh, okay. Well, I think we're live now anyway. So uh, for everybody that's just joining in, I think, let me see. I don't know. I hope it's live. Nevertheless, my name is Chris Monroe, the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke. We're bringing another guest to you today that just closed her first wholesale deal out of Virginia, right? Yes, Northern Virginia. Northern Virginia, where the where the ballers stay, I guess. I don't know, basketball maybe. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, we're going to get to that in a second here. But for everybody's joining, make sure you give it a good thumbs up. If you have any questions about anything we're talking about, any comments, if you're trying to figure out how did they do that, I didn't figure how they did this or that, go ahead and ask it in the comments. And we'll definitely try to get any questions answered. But I try to bring people on that have uh, closed their first wholesale deal to give people that are trying to get their first deal done the inspiration and motivation to step up to the plate and make things happen. I know it's difficult. Some people say, I've been doing it for six months. I've been doing it for a year. Some people even two whole years trying to get their first deal. Mm -hmm. and the center here got a first deal. How long did it take you? Well, with this probate, um, the process started about last August. Oh. And... Yes, last August. So of course, probates do take some time, but it was a learning process throughout the way, throughout the way, which was amazing. It was phenomenal. Um, so it took 10 months, actually, uh, because this oh, wow. wasn't a simple probate. Okay, that makes sense. So we're going to get into digging down into how the deal happened and everything like that in just a moment. But before people that don't know, uh, can you give a little background? What do you do in your regular life? What do you do in uh, regular civilian life, I guess we can say? My regular life. Wow. So I am a army veteran and I am currently going to school. I'm going to community college where I'm going to be studying physical fitness, rehabilitation, therapeutic rehabilitation, and I'll be transferring to George Mason university next, oh, next spring, actually. <laughs> wow. So you, you were in the army. I was in the army. Um, oh, I was, I was medically retired June 19th of this year. Oh, wow. Congratulations. I did my six years in the Army. I was a supply sergeant. What was your MOS? My MOS was 92 Golf Col Culinary Arts Specialist. Oh, you were in the kitchen chopping it up, huh? I was chopping it up, chopping oh, it up, making sauces and everything. Up? Yeah, they call it whipping it up, whipping it, whipping, whipping it up. It up. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. So that's good. That's good. So what was it that made you finally uh, come across re real estate, wholesaling and things like that? Where did you find out about it first? Well, I found out about it from my business partner and the owner of True Vision Investment, LLC. Basically, he asked me, hey, in your downtime, if I give you a list of leads, can you call them and potentially get one? And if so, I'll break you off a piece of the bread. So I said, okay, sure, let me do that. So I was just cold calling people. I kept getting no's. I kept getting, who the hell is this? I kept getting hung up on and it. And because I worked in customer service for years, I think that kind of built up my confidence a little bit. But again, over the phone, it's kind of hard to talk to somebody, get them to open up. So finally, out of the blue, um, we called number 85 and it happened to be a person who was deceased. And I got on the phone with a relative who actually lived out in Oceans. No, who lived out in California. I do apologize. Oh, wow. <laughs> they were on the whole West Coast, and you're on the East Coast and ready to buy that house. Yes. So that's what happened. We were working with a different time zone, and she had to prove that she was able to sell the house um, in Virginia. So there was, a lot of move, there was a lot of moving parts with this deal, and I had to really learn about everything so that I wouldn't get myself in trouble, obviously. <laughs> mm, so it was a big learning curve. And so, so with this probate process... Did you have to uh, go through the court system and deal with all of that stuff? Or what did you have to do? Just deal with the personal representative or whatever they're called in your state? Well, actually, I did not have to deal with a personal representative. The seller actually had a probate lawyer, but unfortunately, the lawyer wasn't moving his feet quick enough. So I was able to help. <laughs> 
I actually found her niche, her pain point of why she needed to get rid of it, which was an inherited property. And she couldn't do, she couldn't keep up with the maintenance anymore. So I was able to get the will and actually probate it in Virginia. So (laughs) yes. So that was, that's what was going on. Um, And then after that, I had to work with lawyers in New Jersey because the owner died in a different state. So I had to work with California, Virginia, and New Jersey (laughs) to get this. So that's called problem solving 101, huh? Yes. Yes, exactly. So let me make sure, how did you find, did you pull a list or something? How did you get the list to even be able to call this probate? Uh, basically we found the lit, we found the list, I believe REI pro. Yes. Yes. And then we had been searching, um, Craigslist and then we went to the probate, the probate office in the courthouse. Every County should have a probate office. The thing about it is if you call that office, a lot of times the workers don't want to give you that information, i.e. they don't get paid enough to pull that information. So you have to go to the courthouse yourself and actually go into the probate office. And then there you can actually get documentation and using computers and pull out probated wills of people who have real estate property. Wow, so you learned all about the process. So you got a friend at the probate office now or what? No, I don't have a friend, but actually uh, you meet a lot of people. There's some people who just wanna deal with probates because it's a lot simpler. You don't have to deal with tax delinquencies. Um, And it's, I mean, it's, it's all, right and good i mean there's no there's no back delinquencies you have to worry about if that makes sense right right so everything's going to be caught up you know it's ready to go clear title just got to get to that last little finish hump so exactly. tell me about the condition of the house how, how did that go how did how were you able to get into the house how were you able to figure out what the uh condition of it was or you just threw a number out there and, and prayed <laughs> that it was low enough so i had to actually write up my own um agreement of entry so that I was allowed to enter the premise while the owner or co-owner who lived in California wasn't there. So we did that and we faxed that information to her, that agreement to her, and she faxed it back, of course. And so we were able to actually change the locks. So I changed the locks and I had possession of the house at that time. So I had a little bit of control with that deal. (laughs) But because the house was in superb condition, basically it was built in 2001. Yep, 2001, I'm looking at my notes right here, 2001 and the downstairs was only used. So the upstairs was still kind of a construction in good shape. Um, So basically it was was a hot ticket item. I mean, once we got it under contract, the I think like three weeks later, we had two buyers coming by. Even the gentleman who built the house wanted to buy it outright. Wow! So so um, so you locked it up. What what did you think the ARV or the after repair value of this house was? The ARV, um, basically, you probably would have to put about ten or fifteen thousand dollars into it. Uh, the subfloor was completely um, it was com- it was completely bare, um, but it was just because of the location, I think that's why the buyer really wanted it. It's 10 or 15 minutes away from the NASCAR racetrack. So that's why he really wanted this deal. So it had a really good location. Uh, What was it that you think this house was supposed to be worth once it was fixed all up in perfect tip top shape? What was the value of the house you think was going to be when it was done up? Oh, he, the the buyer can definitely get close to 200,000 out of it. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So you think it was worth about 200 and repair costs about 15 maybe. Um, and then how much did you lock it up for with your uh, original seller? Originally, we locked it up for 60,000. Um, and then she came back and said that there was somebody else who wanted 65. Um, and so we kind of had to like play a little bit of ball. And then she finally agreed on 70K. Okay. So you locked it up for 70K and then you sent it out to, uh, how, how did you find your end buyer, your cash buyer? Did you market specifically for a cash buyer or just say, we got a house, who wants it? 
Um, no, I didn't, but my business partner did. He actually made a connection within the wholesalers elite group with the buyer. And so that buyer came by to look at the house because he was in the area. He's also, uh, he's active duty army. So he's been investing in the area a long time and he wanted another property for his portfolio. So he came by the same day that we got the locks changed. And then we found a note on the door from the guy who built the house, who was actually trying to buy it back as a wholesaler too. So wow. he saw that we had access to the house and he noticed that it had been vacant for a while. So he said, oh, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll take it off your hands for 10K. But of yeah. course. <laughs> Somebody always trying to come in and lowball and do some quick stuff. Just sign right here. Don't read it. Don't read the right. fine print. Just sign real quick. <laughs> wow. Wow. So you had it locked up for 70K and you sent it out or your partner went and found a buyer. How much was he asking for the house uh, to sell it to an end buyer? Uh, the end buyer, he was asking 85. Oh, okay. So you got your full asking price. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Do you think that's the most y'all could have got for it? Or do you, or you just know, just get rid of it quickly. That was your idea. I think that since it was the first deal, we could have gotten a lot more, but obviously we had two buyers and we didn't really want to waste time, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I think 15 K was, was pretty good for our first deal. And because the seller wanted to offload it very quickly, uh, we were able to meet, I mean, her numbers and she can take care of what she needs to take care of financially and pay all the heirs. So it was a blessing that we landed it, that we landed with it uh, because the house had been sitting vacant for seven, eight, nine years. And people were trying to get it under contract, trying to get it under contract. And by God's grace, like we were just blessed with it. So it was, it was a diamond in the rough, like hidden under a rock basically. So I'm just yeah. really blessed. Yeah, stuff had to line up the moon and the stars had to shift around and be just right and drop it into your life. Cause I just did the numbers on it. So ARV of about, or after repair value of 200,000 minus 30% minus you say about 15,000 in repairs. Mm -hmm. That's about, 125. Woo, that's a big jump. And they, yeah, I know they should have been all over that. So, oh, I, yeah. so they, they got a steal of a deal. They almost could uh try to put it back out themselves, knowing them or oh, put yeah. uh, what you call host hotel it, put it back <laughs> on the MLS or something. Do you know yeah. what that end buyer is going to do with the property? I do know that the end buyer is going to convert it from a two bedroom, one bath to a four bedroom, two bath. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely going to get that's that 200K or to. more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he's going to put more repair money into it more than a 15 K. Okay. So this property was, uh, it had a full basement and everything. So I guess it had a lot of room to add stuff to it or. No, it didn't even have a basement. It just had two floors. That was oh, it. Yeah. But okay. because the, um, because the deceased owner was obviously deceased, she only used the bottom portion. The upstairs half was still in amazing condition for how long it was sitting well sitting there sorry <laughs> i know that's right so how long did it take you from the time you got it under contract to actually find your end buyer just a few days or a while we actually had now that i think about it we actually it didn't take long um i think 24 hours we already had the end buyer in place which we call falling forward so you're not scrambling to get a buyer after you lock up a house because <laughs> mm -hmm. you already know what the buyer wants. Hey, I want this square footage. I want this neighborhood. I want the zip code. I want a two bedroom, one bath, three bedroom, one bath, four bedroom, two and a half bath. So you already know what their credentials are and what they're looking for. So, and you know, they the real deal, real cash buyers. So yeah. let me ask you this. So you said you had like two buyers. What made you choose one over the other? Um, I did not like the gentleman who had built the house, just, just the way that he was approaching us. Um, he kind of was talking down to us. And, and of course, yes, we are new to this game, but we didn't put on, we didn't put on a front. And also we knew what we were talking about because we wouldn't have gotten this far to get the house under contract with the seller. If we didn't know what we were going to do with it. Right, right. So he tried to play like, yeah, just give it over for 10 grand. Don't worry about it. Just get on out the way, sign this paper, try to strong arm you like you don't know what you're doing. Say, I'm from the military, fool. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but the thing is, I mean, he probably would have walked away from it if he hadn't have known how many components there were with the probate. 
Just like I said earlier, a lot of probates can be easy, but then some of them are a little bit hard because there's hidden dimensions or hidden layers. And once you peel back those layers, God will move you along. He'll take you along this process and he won't leave you stuck. So the fact that the seller trusted me to handle all that, I have no words. I have no words. I'm just completely thankful. Wow. Yeah. Cause it's amazing. You got to build that rapport. So you, you, you knew them pretty well. Did you ever get to meet them or was this pretty much a virtual deal? Um, no, I never, I never got to meet them, but she's still saved in my phone. I still communicate with her. Um, she knows all about me and my family. I, I know all about hers. And sometimes when she was going silent and we didn't know what she was thinking, um, mm -hmm. for example, her mother actually passed away um, during this whole process. So I knew that I had to give her space um, and I couldn't talk about a deal after she was grieving her mother. So I let her come back to us and communicate what she needed to do next. And then the buyer, we kept the buyer informed on everything that was going on with paperwork from California all the way to New Jersey, all the way down to Virginia. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. to coordinate and play musical chairs. Who's not going to get a seat? Right. <laughs> I know that's right. So how long is it has you been since you started wholesaling before you got your first deal? Because I know a lot of people say it took them a year or it took them six months. How long before you started, I guess, legitimately? Or do you feel like you were just playing a little bit and then finally got serious? I was playing a little bit until the seller asked me to actually send her uh, agreement to enter the facility. And I had to you know, become a lawyer and type that agreement up myself, you know, do the research. So then I was like, okay, this is business. My name is going on a legal documentation and I need to make sure that I'm 100% in it or not. And I was. So it took about 10 months and yes, I could have gotten more deals, but the thing that stopped me in my tracks was I wanted to make sure I knew what I was doing before I took on other deals. Okay. So do you feel like you learned a lot in this process? Is this something you're going to pursue going forward more probates or are you trying to jump over to something different? Oh, oh, it's, it's something that I'm going to pursue, um, <laughs> wholeheartedly. <laughs> um, probates is where I'm going. We're actually looking at Baltimore and Northern Virginia. We're still looking at Richmond, um, area in Virginia because the buyer who we, just close to deal with once more deals. So we're going to try to pocket some for him. But yes, now that I know how to maneuver um, within probate properties, I'm definitely going to do it. Right. I know that's right. And for those that are watching here live on the Woke Real Estate Investors Group on Facebook, if you have any questions, drop them in and we'll try to get those answered for you. Give it a thumbs up, share it out, stuff like that. Even the people watching on YouTube, we love you too. So Ms. Jacinta, uh, what are you planning on doing going forward? You stand, uh, stand with the wholesaling or you plan to do buy and hold? You want to do some bigger projects, development? What's going on for your future, you and your partner? I want to do wholesaling. I actually want to do wholesaling. And then also um, the... There's a service that Long and Foster is actually offering for military veterans, active duty and spouses, where you can actually take uh, free real estate classes. So I'm gonna do that to get my real estate license so I can have that information in my pocket. But wholesaling, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna do wholesaling. I'm definitely gonna do wholesaling. You don't need your real estate license, but yes, wholesaling is where it's gonna go. Okay. And saying, Dan, yeah, what do you plan to do with your real estate license? Do you feel like that's going to help you with get more leads or what do you think that's going to do to enhance your business or just knowledge base? It's going to, it's going to enhance the business as well, but then also knowledge base. And then also as I obtain my license, I'll be able to put my name with a company, not necessarily Long and Foster, and I'll be able to work through probates as well. I do want to become a probate specialist uh, once I obtain my real estate license, because when you find your niche and a specialty, that's also something that sets you apart when you're in a pond full of like <laughs> big fish. Well, so, I got a surprise for you, Jacinta. Okay. You're already a probate specialist. You're already <laughs> in there. What you talking about? <laughs> you know more about no, probate true. than most people. <laughs> This is true. You are absolutely right. You are absolutely right. And I will, and I will take that title from now on probate specialist. So if I got probate questions, I know who I'm hitting. Hey, how did this work? If uh, they ain't calling me back. No, I don't know. Some of stuff. <laughs> oh yes. And then also um, I actually have a recommendation. There is an audible book uh, that's called uh, probates. And basically if you listen to that book, it's probably like an hour and hour to two hours long. That gives you some basic information. But one of the key points that I want to point out is if you are going into probates, don't let someone who doesn't do probates talk you 
into something or talk you out of something. They don't know what they're doing. You're already immersed in the material. You're already immersed in this in the situation and you're already trying to help the seller. So go with your gut. Don't listen to somebody who's like, oh, probates aren't the way to go. They are the way to go. No one just wants to bother them, bother with them because they don't know how to do them. Until exactly. you do them. Yeah, and it's the same thing with like pre foreclosures and stuff. They're like, oh, I don't want to deal with banks. I don't want to deal with all these third parties. It's problems. You got to solve these people's problems. That's how you get these checks. Yes, creative, creative problem solving, basically. So me and my business partner were the creative problem problem solvers, I'm so sorry, to the seller. And she said that even when she comes out to Virginia, she wants to take us out to dinner. So I cannot wait to see her and meet her. And she already told her family and friends about how well we were virtually handling everything on this side. So it's, it's amazing. <laughs> right, right. And that's why I wanted to ask you too, because I know a lot of people are taking on JV partners, regular partners, things like that. How do you and your partner divide up the responsibilities or how do y'all figure out you do this, they do that? How do you break that down? Basically, me and my business partner have sat down one-on-one -on -one and talked about what we wanted to do. He actually um, has four business quadrants and basically I'm in charge of acquisition. So I don't make any money unless I bring in leads that actually lead to a deal. So right now I'm taking a little bit of rest per doctor's orders. <laughs> um, that's something I can't avoid, but I'm not getting paid. So if I do come with a lead in the next week or two weeks, then that's money that we split. And we already have a contract that I actually got notarized. So we have everything worked out legally. He's a business owner. So of course he gets a higher percentage, but I'm very comfortable with what I get. Yeah. Cause you're getting an education too. You know, you got somebody right there that you can lean on and say, Hey, I'm stuck. You know, people don't understand the value of that. Having somebody that kind of understands business or understands real estate that can help you along the way when problems arise, because problems are definitely going to come when you agree. Right. Yes. They, they always come even in the, even in the group, you see people run into all these problems and people just try to help them out and give them the best support and information that they need. So that's, I mean, that's basically what's going on but with uh, my business partner he's been phenomenal just for him to ask me to do this and for my percentage to go up from like I mean what a thousand dollars to 33 percent of the profit I mean that was that was pretty awesome because he saw the value that I brought to bringing this deal to a close exactly. and then um, yes and then another thing um at the end of the day with the buyer, he was in communication with the buyer more than me. But when the, when the ink was like dried on the paper, I actually gave them um, parting gifts um, just to remember us by, because you always want them to think of you, you know, when they're, when they're uh, looking at something in the future. So. Wow. Look at that. You, you sound like you're a business owner already yourself. Look at you <laughs> with all these skills and talents. <laughs> Because if they don't know you, they can't flow you, right? So that's exactly. the thing. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that came from Uncle G. I didn't make that up. I just like it. So I steal it all the time. I hack people's stuff. I don't care. They ain't creating nothing. They, all this stuff made up anyway, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. That's good. So um, so you said you're going to go and stick into doing more wholesaling and you're going to do more leads. So you said your position there is more like lead, um, what'd you call it? Lead or acquisition is or what'd you call it? Lead property acquisition manager. Oh, see, I knew you had a real title for it. I knew it. It's a real title. Put it on your door. Wait a minute. Yeah. So, um, so that we don't um, get too drained, he's going to focus on one one part of the area. Obviously, Richmond. I'm so sorry. Obviously, Richmond because he has that buyer that we just worked with, and then he actually has another buyer who's looking at a property. Um, so he's going to work with that. And then I'm going to take Northern Virginia. And then he has a couple other people working with him to do Baltimore and DC. So y'all about to take over the whole East coast, huh? We are, but there's, there's enough for everybody. There's enough money to go around for everybody. And if I knew what I knew now, uh, when I was 18, oh uh, man, I would have totally changed the trajectory of my life. Yeah. And it makes a difference. So that's what a lot of people don't realize too. They think, you know, I just want to get the lead and get 500 to a thousand bucks. But if they take the time to study and work on themselves harder than they do on the job, work on themselves, it makes a big difference because you get bigger checks, you do bigger things. You may have a little bit more responsibilities, but just take the next step and put it under contract. Put the exactly. paperwork on it. And the only, don't, I didn't even have to put a lot of money into it really to get access to the property. The only money that I put up was 
to get the locks changed. And then the, the cool thing about it, since we have a really good rapport with the seller, she's actually going to reimburse me for that money. And then any doc money that we had to get for documentations for the will, the actual will exemplified copy from a judge probating the will. And then she's going to pay us mileage as well, reimburse us for mileage. So that's like 80, what is it? 89 miles each way, <laughs> every time we had to go down there. So wow, that's really a good story. She ain't selling any more houses, is she? No, no. But I did say that <laughs> if she knows anyone, just kind of pop her name in there. <laughs> yeah, and what I, I don't know if you did this or not. If you can, get her back on the phone and record or get her, get her to give you some type of short testimonial. Something you can put up on your website. Somebody else will just coming across you in the future and look back and say, oh, well, they helped me out. They solved my problem, yada, yada, yada. And they're great. And make them say your company name or whatever. You know, it's something cool. You know, I try to get as many testimonies as I can. And it definitely already, does help out. Yep, I'm already on that. She's actually um, also going to get us some new marketing things as well because she works for a law firm in California. So that's a really big connection. You know, lawyers make a lot of money. So, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. So get some referrals. I know that's right. So um, if people want to connect with you outside of, uh, I guess you're in a, the you're in Max's group, you're on a wholesale elite, and now you're in the woke real estate investors group on Facebook and probably some other groups. How do people connect with you on social media, IG, things like that? Uh, you can look me up on Facebook, um, J C N T A D R S E Y. I took out the vows of my name when I was in the military. I got to change that back so my leadership wouldn't look for me. <laughs> but um, and then also you can just <laughs> email me, J is in Juliet, N is in Nancy, D is in Delta five zero three seven at gmail dot com. And um, if you want to practice cold calling, because you know sometimes I fumble a lot on words, or if you just want to pick my brain on information, or maybe I can ask other people questions. Just get in contact with me and I would love to set up a meeting. I know that's right. I appreciate that. And um, is there any other tips or tricks or hacks that you want to share with the people that's listening that is going to watch it on a replay that they need to know before they jump into this pro bay game? Let's see. Find your niche. Find your niche. Don't be like a robot caller. Um, find the pain point, relate to them, get, get, find out why the seller is trying to sell the house basically. And sometimes that is hard on, on the first call, but even if you get a no, or please don't call me again or something like that, you, you can always just check back in a couple months because you don't know what that situation was now and like three months from now. So just, just find your niche, find, find the pain point of your business um, that you want to relate to customers or sellers to get the house under contract and then find out what a buyer wants. You know, always, I, I think also always have a buyer in your back pocket before you lock a house under contract. Good advice. Good advice. And I do want to add on to that because I know a lot of people like to get on the phone with them. Hey, yeah, you want to sell? Why are you selling? Like just the first question out their mouth. I never do that. I try yeah. to ask a little other basic information about the house or their situation. And then I say, well, you know, this looks like a pretty good house, Mr. Seller. What made you decide to want to sell it? It's better than just saying, why you want to sell it? It's like kind of, it feels kind of aggressive and like you're trying to prey on them or something. You know what I mean? So I found that to be a better way to kind of ask that question. And I also get answers for it. Yes. So true. Right, right. All right. Let me check a look here and see if we got any questions here on the woke real estate investors group. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. We got who we here. Let's see. Anthony Barnes say, how did you find your first probate? I guess you already answered that, but um, you said basically a list, right? Mm -hmm. okay. List. Every county in your state has a probate office. Um, so if you go to the courthouse and you actually look for the probate office, they'll have documentation of real estate property and they'll have wills and probate lists. So what you're looking for is a person who has real estate property in the will. So let's say John Doe lives at 2813 Ashland Court and that's a house that you know is listed as for sale or sale by owner then that's something that you can definitely um, contact the heir who is the rightful seller. So you'll have a family representative of the living heirs that are listed in the will. So those are the people who have the right to sell the property. 
Right, right. See, I told you, you a probate specialist. I told you, you ready for them. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Uh, I think we, I think that's, let's see, just other people here. I see we got a couple people watching. All right, other than that, I think that's going to do it. Uh, did you have anything else you want to share before I let you go? I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity to be on the show and inviting me to this group. I'm so excited about the camaraderie and the newfound friendship that we have and the connection. So I can't wait to build on that. Even when I was passing through Missouri for vacation this week, I mean, I thought of you. I was just like, that's a house I want to buy. That's a house I want to get. Uh, you don't want to be in this market. You, know, you you too good. <laughs> we don't need you over here. I'm just playing. <laughs> we need you out here. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, I know that's right. So I appreciate you as well. Uh, for everybody else, make sure you follow me on all social media outlets at Chris Monroe STL and check out that wokerealestate.com for all of your contracts, coaching, and cool gear. Where yes. are my hats at? Here's a hat. Here's a little sun visor or another hat. Any of all that stuff. Wokerealestate.com is the website. I'm about to get up out of here and do some more woke stuff. Thanks a lot, Jacinta. I'll Thank talk you so to you much, later. Chris. All, all right. right. I appreciate you. So do what you do. Be who you be, and I'll see you before you see me. Peace out. <laughs> Bye.